Chef Gassis. Chef Meta. Only one chef earned the right to be called Iron Chef. When did competitive cooking become a sport and the chefs celebrities? Who knows? But Chef Garces, he loves it. Creativity, flavor building, cooking under pressure, cameras, fog, audience. At the end of it, there's just a sense of satisfaction that I get. And there's really no deep story. Frankly, he just needed a job. No one in my family was in the restaurant or hospitality business. It was found out of necessity. Multiple TV shows and restaurants speak to his success, but it's not about that. He loves to cook. I don't ever consider myself a celebrity, me personally. I consider myself a cook, a dad, a husband. For me, that's, that's kept me uh, grounded. One of truly the best in the world today on The Pulse. The next Iron Chef is Chef Garces. Guys, welcome to The Pulse. And this is actually a special edition. I wanted to see if we could cook during yeah. this episode, <laughs> um, but I don't think we can do that. But instead, we brought in celebrity chef, entrepreneur, uh, mm. doing charity and philanthropic wrote work, and just a good dude, Chef oh. Jose Garces. Yeah, how are you, sir? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So we had a plan, and we didn't think we could make this work. We were oh. trying to figure out, with all the shows you've done and all the creativity of all your restaurants, if we brought in an Easy Bake Oven yeah, and set it up. And then there's a cafe around the corner, and we were going to get, like, Raisin Bran and <laughs> Butterscotch Crimpets and okay. Sour Patch Kids and Sparkling Water. And say, Got it. Like, okay, Mr. Iron Chef. Those are the ingredients. Yeah. Those are the ingredients. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I, think I got something. You, you yeah, probably could. Yeah, I would make maybe a oh, like a serious. take on uh, take on granola, kind of grind up the uh, the raisin bran, make it, and then get it crunchy. Add some of the. <laughs> Dude, how, no. Like I'm joking, but how does your mind work to figure that kind of thing out? Like I talk to you all the time when I see you about how that show yeah. always makes me go what. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny with competitive cooking. And um, recently I've been on a show called Tournament of Champions mm -hmm. on Food Network. And that show, unlike Iron Chef, which I was, I was an Iron Chef for five years, had a, you know, with Iron Chef, I was able to kind of had a team. I wasn't on my own. I had, uh, you know, s some like preparation that I could do beforehand, kind of knowing it was going to be a secret ingredient. Tournament of Champions is, is a totally different animal altogether. It's really, um, it's, it's Guy Fieri. He has a, a randomizer. He spins it. There's five categories, proteins, uh, vegetables, cooking style, time, and some other wild card that he'll throw in there. And it's a real like five minute prep to make something delicious, to make a winnable dish. So um, yeah, I've just I've been in the cooking competition mode recently and so yeah your mind starts starts getting there and I, I see that and I hear you describing the tournament of champions that doesn't sound fun like, that <laughs> sounds like, now obviously I you know I can't really cook but that sounds like a lot of of opportunity to not do well and a huge challenge to create this great dish yeah I think I find it to be you know I've been a competitive chef just for a long time but in the competitive cooking arena and um, I find it's like it's the most exhilarating thing that I do, you know, as it relates to like my career. So because it pushes several boundaries, creativity, flavor building, cooking under pressure, cameras, fog, audience, all that. And yeah, while it may sound um, kind of, I don't know, overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, I tell you what, at the end of it, there's just a sense of satisfaction that I get from it. And some, you know, listen. I don't always win. I wish I did, but sometimes you lose, and that's also a tough pill to swallow. But I think it teaches you some humility. It teaches you kind of like you know, basically, hey, you know, it's 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 a competitive world out there. And so, I don't know. There there are a lot of lessons for me in the in the action. I feel like most of us watching, you could give us like chicken and lettuce and potatoes, and we would go, huh, what to do? And you're coming up with all these things. Walk us back. When did this start? 
Like, when did you get into the whole concept? Was it like a really young age? When did you know you had this cooking bug? I went to cooking school as a vocation, as a trade, because I'd realized that um, academia wasn't really for me. I really didn't have like a passion for, for, for anything at the, at the moment. I was, you know, I said, hey, you know, I really have to like get a job and start earning. And so uh, this was, I was early, I was probably like, you know, 20 or so. Uh, walked, into, walk in, walked into school, um, Kendall College in Chicago, and realized that, you know, the, the discipline, you know, the, kind of the white jackets, the, the crisp white hats, kind of the brigade style was something for me. So guardrails and, and kind of putting, putting, putting a lot of things in perspective. And so um, I got to school and again, just learning, wanting to learn a trade. I started like competing already with with classmates and whatnot, and and all of a sudden I'm discovering, hey, I'm actually I have a talent and and I have a passion for for creating and cooking, and that happened right away. My mom and my grandma were, were great cooks. I cooked with them uh, growing up, but I was more of an eater, less of a <laughs> less of a cook. So um, so yeah, it was truly a discovery that uh, again to this day. I still feel like super fortunate about that moment because um, it's a passion. A lot of people we have on the pulse, like comedians go, man, when I, when I was five, I had the whole class go and, you know, like born with it or developed it over all these years. You really had to find it. It was there, but you had to discover it. Um, didn't, no one in my family was in the restaurant or hospitality business. Uh, so there was real, no real big influences at the time. So yeah, it was it was found out of necessity, and I think that's that's also kind of kind of neat. You know, if you kind of sometimes you you find yourself, you know, your kind of back is up against the wall, and you have to like do. Um, and so yeah, it, it really again was such a. I feel so fortunate to have found that. Yeah, it's inspiring to people watching. I guess it's inspiring to me. Like I needed a job. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Well, I was, you know, I'd gone to a few years of undergrad, and I just was really at this moment. And I'm sure, you know, I have, I have uh, teenage kids. I have uh, my daughters in college too, and I'm like guiding them right now. Like, hey guys, let's stay on track. Let's keep our career paths going. Because at that time, really, I didn't have a lot of guidance. I didn't have a lot of like mentors, and so it was really up to me you know, to kind of make ends meet and, and, and get on. I remember thinking, well, you know what? Um, I just need to like pick up a skill, get really get a trade. And, and, and I think nowadays it's interesting that that's still very relevant in our current society. We need, uh, we need great, great plumbers, great electricians. We need great carpenters. We still need those trades folks to like keep doing. Cause otherwise, you know, um, yeah, things won't get built or things won't get done. And and I do think there is, and again, just speaking of the trades, there's like a negative perception around it. And I don't know why, because it's, it is, uh, you know, those folks still earn, a, they earn a good living, they have a good quality of life. And I just hope that maybe over time, those stigmas kind of go away and, and, and really our youth kind of embrace that vocational trades that are out there. Next up, what happens when you challenge an Iron Chef to make a Philly staple? I'm making a Wagyu ribeye cheesesteak with caramelized onions, truffle provolone fondue, an amazing bun. And I'm like, all right, here we go, guys. Boom. 